In this video, we're talking all about soil moisture sensors. I'm Sprinkler and Andy, you're watching Sprinkler TV and let's talk soil moisture sensors. So right out of the gate, I have a baseline, oh, it's upside down. Baseline soil moisture sensor. Baseline is one of the pioneers of soil moisture sensing technology. And this sensor right here is what developed the company into what it is today, which is entire engineered control system. There's this baseline soil moisture sensor. There is a smaller baseline soil moisture sensor that can be connected to any irrigation controller like a Hunter Pro C or a Rainbird ESP. And a sensor like this, a soil moisture sensor like this is designed to automate the irrigation system. When we talk about automating an irrigation system, we're talking about when to start watering and when to stop watering. Okay, that is what a soil moisture sensor does. It provides the user, us, with data. And with that data, we can make better irrigation management decisions. And those management decisions are when to start, how dry do you wanna let your system get before you reapply the water? And when you start watering and you start reapplying that water, how long should you water until it's wet and you wanna stop watering so that you don't over water. So it's really those two principles that a soil moisture sensor can automate for us, when to start and when to stop, okay? If you're not looking to automate your irrigation system using a soil moisture sensor, you can use something like a SPIO sensor. SPIO is a newer company that provides basically data loggers. So this sensor actually has a cellular device built into it. So you can install this bio sensor really anywhere in the world and have it pipe data up to the cloud so you can review the data from your smartphone or from a browser. And then you can use the data that you're pulling in to make adjustments manually to your irrigation system. If there isn't an irrigation system, you can just review the data for the sake of data. I want all the information on the the development of this project. All data piles backup disks on my desk right away. One of the things that I think SPIO is doing more recently is they're opening up their data, opening up their API so you can connect it to third party devices. So perhaps sometime in the future, you could install a SPIO sensor, connect it through the API and automate your irrigation system. But as it stands today, there's only a couple companies like baseline, okay? This is the baseline receiver that goes with the add-on soil moisture sensor here so that you can use this sensor to automate your system. Now, something like this add-on sensor, this, this particular device actually doesn't control the runtime because if you want to control the runtime and turn your system off when it's wet, you have to have something that is built into the uh, operating system of the controller so that it can take a 30 minute runtime and make it 18 minutes or a 30 minute runtime and make it 48 minutes. And so add-on devices like this are generally commonly referred to as a common interrupt or a sensor interrupt. So what this device is going to do is it's gonna prevent the irrigation system from running until it's dry. So this is also what we call a lower threshold device. So your irrigation controller, let's say your Hunter Pro C or your Rainbird ESP, it'll always run for the time that is set on the controller, but it will not be allowed to water until it is to a certain dry or lower threshold. So again, those two data points are what drives the automation of an irrigation system, when to water, what day of the week, what time, when is it dry, how long to water, how many minutes is it going to take to fill up the profile until we reach field capacity, full, wet, whatever you wanna call it, upper threshold. And then in between, there are a lot of other sort of best management practices like cycle and soaking your irrigation system. So if you're trying to turn it off when it's full, the best practice is to pulse that water. If you have a 60 minute runtime, water for 15 minutes, wait for 30 minutes, apply another cycle, water for 15 minutes, wait for 30 minutes. And you keep doing that until that soil moisture sensor, like this baseline, has reached field capacity and then it can turn off. Maybe it's one cycle, maybe it's two cycles. And sometimes that first cycle of water basically breaks the surface tension and then 
uh, after that, each cycle thereafter just makes it a little bit wetter slowly over time. And when it hits that threshold, boom, you can turn the water off. And that is a much smarter way of watering than just turning it on Monday at 8 a.m. just because the alarm clock went off. Maybe it's not dry enough. Maybe that 30 minutes of water too much okay so i think we're going to see a lot more of sensors like this into the future and if we can answer any soil moisture sensor questions for you drop a comment down below we'd love to hear from you i've been experimenting with soil moisture sensors for almost 20 years have seen them in lots of applications so if you have any questions drop a comment down below don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get notified every time we release a new video Thank you so much for watching. Happy sprinkling. We'll see you on the next Sprinkler Supply Store product overview.